Hello everyone. Hello my chef students. Today we are going to discuss on the poem The Chimney Sweeper written by William Blake. Let us see something about the poem, the poet, poem, theme of the poem, works of the poet and the rhyming scheme of the poem. So the poet William Blake was born in the year 1757 and he died in the year 1827. He is from England. He is an English man, an English poet and a painter. About the poem, this poem is taken from the collections of poem called Songs of Innocence written by William Blake. And as a theme, we will see misery, death and hope in the poem. We are going to learn misery, death and hope as a theme of the poem. Now the works of the poet. William Blake, in most of his writings, he depicts the criticism on society, the evil practices that was prevailing in England during his time. So, even in this poem, we are going to see how small children suffered, how small children led a miserable life working as a chimney sweeper to earn their livelihood. We will see the misery of those small children, but they get a hope. What hope that after they die, they are going to be with God. They are going to be happy. They are going to be free. There will be no pain. There will be no sufferings. There will be no misery in their life. The rhyming scheme of the poem. The word rhyming means those words that have a same ending sound or same vowel sound. Now, to find out the rhyming scheme of the poem, we have to look into the last word of every line of the poem. In this poem, we have got six stanzas, and in this, all these six stanzas, the poet follows the same rhyming pattern. So, the first, in the first stanza, the first word ends with young, second word ends with dumb, third, weep, fourth, sleep. Now, to find out the rhyming scheme, we have to see which word is rhyming with which one. This young, you will name it as A. Dung, young and dumb, they are rhyming. We will name it as A and A. The third line, whip, it is not rhyming with young and dumb. We will name it as P. Sleep, the last word of the last line, it is rhyming with this whip. So, we will name it as P. So, we found here A, A, P, P. So the rhyming scheme of the poem is A, A, P, P. And the poet, he follows this entire pattern throughout the poem in all the six paragraphs. Okay. Now I'm going to read the poem line by line and explain it to you. Here it goes. The first paragraph. When my mother died, I was very young. And my father sold me while yet my tongue could scarcely cry, weep, 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 weep. So your chimneys I sweep and in suit I sleep. In the first paragraph, we find the poet introducing himself and about his work. So he tells that at the very young age, his mother passed away. His mother dies when he was a small boy, when he could even pronounce the word sweep. This line could scarcely cry weep 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 means it's telling us that the boy could not even pronounce the word sweep. He says weep. He was so young. At this age his mother dies and his father sells the poet or sold away the poet to a person who is rich. And in that house the boy is working as a chimney sweeper to earn his livelihood. And the last line, so your chimneys I sweep and in suit I sleep, means he is telling this to the owner of the house or uska male he is telling this line. He is telling that now I am staying in your house, I will sweep your chimneys to earn my livelihood and in suit I sleep. Suit means the dust, the smoke, the furnace of the fire that comes out through the chimney. So with this dust and with this smoke, he sleeps. And in this poem, we also find that 
The poet explains or describes the poem through the mouth of two young speakers. One is the poet and one is his friend named Tom Taker. Okay, let us see the second paragraph. There's little Tom Taker who cried when his head that curled like a lamb's back was saved. So I said, Hush, Tom, never mind it. For when your head's pure, you know that the suit cannot spoil your white hair. Now, in the second paragraph, we find Tom Taker, that is the friend of our speaker, our poet. So, this Tom Taker, it so happened that his hair was curly, curly like the hair of a lamb. So, we know the lamb is a young one of a sheep. So, Tom's hair was curly and because of this curly hair while he was cleaning the chimney to go inside the chimney with his long hair it was a short of uncomfortable so seeing this situation the owner of Tom saves away all the hair from Tom's head now since Tom was a small boy he started weeping he started crying at that time our poet William Blake who is also a small boy comes and comfort Tom Taker. He says, my dear Tom, don't cry. It is better to be hairless. Because when we don't have any hair on our head, no dust, no smoke, no furnace, no soot will destroy your hair. You can work comfortably. Okay, let us go to the third paragraph. And so he was quiet and that very night, as Tom was sleeping, he had such a sight that thousands of sweepers, Dick, Joe, Ned, and Jake, were all of them locked up in coffins of black. So that particular night when Tom was sleeping, he got a dream. And in that dream, he found or he saw thousands of his other friends, his other mates, who were also a eh, chimney sweeper. And they were all locked up in a coffin and the color of the coffin was black. So coffin is a kind of box where the dead bodies are kept. So it was a very big coffin and inside that coffin thousands of workers, namely Tick, Joe, Ned and Jake. So these are all kids. So all, like these kids, thousands of kids were locked in that coffin. That was what John Tom saw in his dream. Okay, let us go to the next paragraph. And by came an angel who had a bright key, and he opened the coffins and set them all free. Then down a green plant, leaping, laughing, they run, and wash in a river and shine in the sun. So now, as all the children were locked inside the coffin, suddenly there appeared an angel of God with a bright key in his hand. And the angel comes and unlocks the boxes and set all the children free from the coffin. Now since the children are set free, they are all happy. They come out from the boxes or the coffin. They jump, they laugh, they jump around, they are playing. And they all run to the river. They wash themselves and after taking bath, after washing themselves, they are all clean and they are shining in the sun. Next paragraph. Then naked and white, all their bags left behind. They rise upon clouds and sports in the wind. And the angel told Tom, if he would be a good boy, he would have God for his father and never want joy. So after bathing, all the children were naked. They were white. They were all pure and clean. And they were all in the clouds. They were playing around in the wind. So sports in the wind means they were playing around in the open air. They were flying as if like they were in a dream. They were flying. They rise upon clouds. They were sitting on the clouds. They were playing around in the open air. And the angel came and told Tom that, Tom, if you were a good boy while you were alive, God will give you all happiness after you die. So in these two paragraphs, we see that the first part of the dream, all the children were locked in the coffin of black color. That signifies 
or that depicts the sufferings, the mystery of the chimney sweepers, those children. Now the angel comes with the bright key and releasing them. It's the coming of death and after we die, we are all going to be with God. We are all going to be clean. We are all going to be pure. We are all going to be white. Those children, while they were sweeping the chimneys, they were very dirty. They did not they have a proper bath. But when we all die, we are all going to be clean and pure. That is the significance of this two paragraph and about this poem and about this paragraph. Coming to the last paragraph. And so Tom awoke and we rose in the dark and got with our packs and our brasses to work. Though the morning was cold, Tom was happy and warm. In the last paragraph, we find that Tom wakes up in the next morning. When he woke up, it was not a very bright morning. It was still a little dark. And the morning was very cold. It was very cold. Yet, he was feeling very warm inside. He was feeling happy inside. Why? Now he got the hope that even if my life is in a miserable condition now, after I die, all this miserable, all these sufferings will be gone. I only have to do my work dutifully. I only have to be a good boy. Then, after I die, God is going to give me all happiness and all the joy. Though the morning was cold, Dom was happy and warm. So he was happy because he got a hope that after he died, he is going to be with God. All his pain, all his sufferings will be vanished. So if all do their duty, they need not fear harm. So in the last hand, it says that if all of us as a human work on our duties dutifully, God will be happy with us. We don't need to fear any other things. Just accept your life as it is. Be happy with what you have, what you are in your life. And do your work dutifully, truthfully. And God will be happy with you. And God will give you freedom, joy and happiness when we die. And when we are going to be with God forever and ever. So this is the end of the poem. Thank you everyone and thank you for listening to me.